I'm Chris Day with Major League Lacrosse. I'm joined by MLL TV analyst Evan Washburn. Evan, thanks for taking some time out of your day to join us. Hey, Chris, no problem, man. All right, well, it's been a busy three weeks in the offseason already for a couple of Major League Lacrosse teams, one of them being the expansion Charlotte Hounds. Uh, I've already made two pretty big trades in the, in the first part of the offseason here. They acquire Pete Poyon and Casey Cittadino uh, from the Denver Outlaws, and they acquire Kevin Drew from the Rochester Rattlers. In exchange, they trade away two-thirds of their starting attack uh, from last season in Jeremy Boltis and, and Billy Bitter. Uh, give us your thoughts on the trades that they've made so far in the offseason. I think the Charlotte Hounds ha have done a good job realizing what didn't work uh, in 2012 and making sure that they're they're making moves to address those those basically you know bad moves last season and, and by that I mean Billy Bitter and Matt Danowski just could not play together Jeremy Bolt is tore his ACL and, and I really don't think we'll be able to play this season if he does it won't be at 100 percent so they found players that can they can plug in and, and will work with their system and they're building continuing to build around Matt Danowski and as you spoke with uh, Mike Serino throughout the season, he was always going back to the fact that they were thin at the midfield. And by thin, I mean they literally were small, and they couldn't play with the likes of Paul Rabel and Kyle Dixon. So they've made moves to address that. Bringing in Pete Puyon is a monster deal for the Hounds. Pete Puyon is one of the better midfielders in the league. He's an all-star each year. You can count on it. Then you add Casey Cittadino, an older guy, but still plays very physical as a short stick D midi. You can count on him for that tough ground ball. Then Kevin Drew, and then you put those two alongside Jerry Riley. Those three defensive midfielders with the short stick will be very, very valuable for this team as they continue to try and play with the likes of the Bayhawks and the Cannons in terms of sort of physicality at the midfield. So I, I think the Hounds have realized that while on paper last season they look like a team you could plug in and, and maybe play in the playoffs, as I did, they realized some of the things that didn't work and they've addressed them. And I think it's, uh, it shows you know, some, some smarts and some, some thoughtful work from uh, Serino and that crew. Let's talk in particular about the, the Pete Poyon acquisition uh, in the midfield. You add him now to a midfield that includes Steven Berger and Joe Von Miller, uh, two ex exciting players in the midfield. Tell me how Pete Poyon fits into that mix and, and how they might have to intertwine those three guys uh, in the midfield. Yeah, it's, you mentioned those are three guys that kind of play a similar style, so you wonder if there's <laughs> enough turf for them to all dodge on. I think things will change a little bit. I think Berger will become more of a shooter, off-ball player. They won't rely on him to continue to be the downhill dodger he was last season. He's getting up there in age, and I just think he can do that. He's smart enough, and it's not an ego thing with him where he can play more of an off-ball role. He'll still have his production. He'll still get his shots. Puyan and Kevin Kaminsky are the guys I think will be their downhill dodgers, and Jovan will continue to play offense. But I think they'll use him on the defensive side a little bit more and have him really be a transitional player, which is good. That's where he should be. That's where he's at his best. But they won't need to they, – they found themselves a lot during the season what to do with Jovan because they needed him on both sides of the ball. They don't now. Now they can use him as the weapon that he is where they'll play, he'll play a series of defense, stay on the field, keep a guy on the field that probably doesn't want to be on the field on the other team and attack him offensively. And in the trade with Rochester, where they sent Billy Bitter and to the Rattlers and acquired Kevin Drew, they also acquired the number four pick in the collegiate draft, giving them the third and fourth overall picks in what many consider to be a pretty deep draft. Now, again, on paper, they traded away two-thirds of their starting attack from last season. Do they need to add an attackman now early in the draft, or what needs do you see them maybe addressing uh, with two picks that high in, in the draft? Well, the first thought that comes to mind is they maybe package those two picks to move up, and maybe if it's not the one, maybe the two. Uh, I don't think they need to jump right on an attackman, but maybe if they stay put at four, they might be able to get Mike Sawyer out of Loyola, who, as we know, played with Eric Lusby, who is now a Charlotte Hound. Those two have unbelievable chemistry. It's a big reason why the Greyhounds won the national championship. So that's an idea. I also think they could go defense, Tucker Durkin, a guy who is a lockdown defenseman, think Michael Evans of the Bayhawks. He would be a nice pick that high because I think they were still trying to figure things out defensively. Uh, Joe Sanowski in company, I think at times, 
just did not have maybe great communication, but I also thought some foot speed and coverage ability wasn't really there. So I think those are two names that jump out that high. But uh, initially, when you think three and four, uh, that's a lot of uh, firepower that you could do some moving. Um, hey, and even maybe use one of them and move back. I don't know, but uh, I think that if they stay put, those are some guys you might you might hear. But if they move up, then then it, all bets are off or they move back. I just think any team would love to have two picks in the top five, obviously. So a year ago, Charlotte was getting ready to go through their the first expansion draft and then their first collegiate draft. They've played one season of Major League Lacrosse and made some big trades in the, in the first month of their second offseason. Overall, give me an assessment of where the Hounds roster sits right now uh, as they head into the collegiate draft and as we look forward to where they might be uh, in 2013 in Major League Lacrosse. They're in a very good place, and I think they've done a nice job of realizing what didn't work last season and, and made some adjustments. They picked up Jeff Snyder. We haven't mentioned his name late in the season. If he's in, he's bought in. He's a top face-off guy in this league. So you build around him, and I think they go into this draft, as we just finished up saying, with a lot of firepower. Now, I don't want to hitch my wagons to the Hounds again because last season I looked on the paper and saw, wow, Mathanowski, uh, Boltis, Bitter, those are guys that are just going to beat their man every day. It's going to work. It's going to be great. They're going to go to the playoffs in their first season. It didn't happen that way. So I think that uh, we need to temper expectations for this team, but you have to be impressed with what they've been able to do in a short amount of time. Again, we're just turning the page into October here in a few days. So for these guys to uh, to be addressing need this early with the high-powered 2013 draft still on the horizon, uh, it, it's a good sign for the fans of Charlotte, and they deserve that. Evan, thanks as always for your time. Chris, anytime, man. <laughs>